Reef Teats is sponsored by Brightwell Aquatics and Bulk Reef Supply. Today we're going to make a DIY kelg reactor. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Dudes. So I've been thinking about adding a calc reactor, just a very small amount, just for the whole pH boost purposes of it. And I was looking at reactors, and I was thinking about ordering one. I was looking around, I'm like, that's it. I'm just gonna DIY one for now. So I figured I'd show you guys kind of what I'm gonna try and attempt to accomplish. So I have this Aquamax reactor laying around, which is about three liters. Now ideally for doing this, you would want a bigger reactor. You know, ideally it'd be nice to have like a five or six inch tube that holds lots of media. But I already have this, so essentially it's free to build. Um, that again, these are only 30, 40 bucks, so they're fairly inexpensive. I also have this magnetic stirrer. Again, it's about 30 bucks, fairly inexpensive. And a little magnetic pill inside. So if I put these together, it spins actually very nicely through this container. Um, so I think this is gonna work well. Um, calc reactors, honestly, they're very simple. You either have a paddle inside that spins it, you have a magnetic pill, basically something inside to spin and mix it together is I wanna put a bit of a bigger output on this. So if I screw in a half inch threaded adapter, you know, put it roughly around the top somewhere up here, then it can just gravity flow out. And I think it's gonna be a super simple design and I think it's gonna be fairly effective. We can just put a little hose on it and feed that to the sump. The only one thing is this is a, there's already a hole in the sand in my water box. So I think to pass wires and stuff through, and I think it actually, if I raise this up four or five inches, I may be able to just use the stock hole in the stand and just kind of put this little mixer on a pedestal and it should do the job. Um, we'll see how it works. And you know, if it doesn't perform properly, you know, maybe I'll buy one eventually, but I figured I have some stuff laying around, so why not DIY one first? So let's get to building. So we're gonna start by drilling a little pilot hole just to kind of get things started. Uh, now that we've got our pilot hole, we need to work this up to half inch. I don't have a drill bit that big, so we're gonna use what's called a step drill bit and we're gonna use this to slowly work it bigger. Now I like to check as I get close because you can always go bigger, but you can't go smaller. So I can go a smidge bigger. Now my proper handle doesn't actually fit this, so we're gonna have to improvise a little bit and hopefully this still works. But essentially what we're doing here is trying to carve in threads. There we go. That's what we want to do, see? If you look closely here, we did make some threads. Now if I had an O-ring, I probably would use it, but because I don't, at least if I can thread it in with a little Teflon tape, it should hopefully make a decent seal. And we have our fitting. All right, nice and snug. We got a bit of Teflon tape on there. Just hopefully fit seal any potential little gaps so hopefully I have no leaks and I'll probably put a little 90 elbow on there just for good measure later but there to make things a little bit fancier I just drilled two blocks of 2x6 together and stained it black this is being a little pedestal to make it look a little bit nicer to sit in here all right so we got my little black block installed really just for aesthetics a little nicer than the raw wood uh, we've got the magnetic stir running around 50% if I keep it around 40 50% then it keeps it quiet now the other thing we got to look consider later is the different pill sizes if you get the right magnetic pill that matches the base you're gonna have a much better kind of mixing it'll be stronger less chance of it being decoupled but looking at the top we have the nice little vortex starting which is awesome to see so the pill that's in there is doing a pretty good job so far and I think this will work out so to start I'm gonna add some calc uh, I do have the Brightwell's calc plus two and this is basically calc with some added magnesium and strontium inside now the one other piece I'm going to add to the top is I did take a half inch 90 and drill a little hole in the top. This is just going to be stop the powder and all the surface stuff I'm going in. It's going to just pull more of the clear water from below. So I'll get this installed. Now for this I think about half a cup should be right. If we add too much all at once uh, we risk it potentially not mixing and stirring properly. You gotta make sure you don't overload what that pill can handle. So I think a half cup's probably gonna be just about right. Love watch that little cyclone form, super cool. The calc's in there, you can see it's mixing up nicely and sucking it down. So I think the stir is gonna be do a pretty good job. Now currently I have it set up on the apex on the oscillating mode. 
So it mixes for one minute every half an hour. And I think that should do the job. Now let this mix up and get super saturated and we'll see how long it lasts. And I'm also kind of curious to see how long my half cup of calc glass inside of here. You can see on the top, most of the top surface has been sucked up, which is awesome. And yeah, so now to feed this, I do have the Versa directly above it. And this is sucking from kind of my little intermittent kind of middleman container. Um, so this is what I've been using for my Mastertronic, just so it has sample water. And with this, I have an optical sensor inside. And right now I have it every couple days, so like kind of Monday, Wednesday, Saturday type of dealio. When the ATO comes on, as long as the sensor is dry, we'll open it. So it should refill this container every other day type of deal. And I also just do have a leak sensor just below it, just in case to make sure it will shut it off if there's ever a leak. So this is where it's going to pull from. This is a one gallon container. I'm going to tell it to do around a mil a minute, maybe 1.5 mils a minute. So it should be about a liter and a half or so a, a day roughly. And yeah, so that's going to feed that as well as my auto tester and hopefully refilling itself, you know, every other day will do the trick. So here she is in all her glory. We're going to let it run for a few days and we'll come back and do an update. All right, guys, now this has been running for about four or five days now. A few little tweaks I've made to the system. So I was originally drawing from that one gallon space saver container that feeds my auto testers. Um, now that just seemed to drain far too quickly for me, even with teeing it into my auto top off. And I felt like I wanted to manually refill it a lot more frequently. Um, so what I did is I actually moved the Versa pump down to my ATO bin and I ran another tube upstairs. So now it's feeding right from that 40 gallon container. So I don't have to worry about that fill it, refilling that little container. So that was the one big thing. Uh, the other thing I experimented a bit with is how much cow could it handle. And I tried putting in a cup, cup and a half, and that was kind of the limit. Like, it didn't really want to stir it. If I do a half cup, so one scoop in there, then it seemed to be able to stir it, mix it up, no problem. So I'm going to say with the DC2 container, roughly a half a cup's kind of the sweet spot with it. So if you buy a bigger, if you have a big reactor, I mean, you'll always be able to fit more in it. If you buy something like the Avast or the Ice Cap, it's going to hold more powder, which means you can maintain it a little less. Um, it's still a little young to figure out how often I have to refill this, but I'm going to guess, you know, sometime two every two or three weeks, I'll probably have to add some more calc powder. But we will see in good time. But for overall, I mean, the container is what, 42 bucks US, the magnetic storage is about 28 bucks, you know, probably another five bucks for your other parts. So you're into it for about 76 bucks in order for all the parts to build this, which is pretty dang good for building a DIY calc reactor. Now that obviously you need a feed pump, which is not included in there. In my case, I'm using the Versa. You could use the Kimura, you can use Dude, you could use a dosing pump, whatever you got laying around. Um, on top of that, if you want to be fancy and tap it in, I did link that in the description, that little NPT pipe thread adapter, and it's only like eight or nine bucks on Amazon. So it's fairly inexpensive, but it allows you to put threads on things and put fittings on it, which is super cool. So overall, super cool project. Uh, my pH has definitely been boosted up. Now that being said, the chart's a little skewed because I also got my replacement skimmer impeller. At the same time, I know that helped to boost up a bit, but I've been seeing a nice increase in pH from adding calc to the tank. I'm currently dosing it at 1.5 mils per minute, and that's kind of where I let things sit on. So yeah, overall, super happy with this project. The tank is looking good and things are happy in it. So hopefully I inspired some of you guys to build a nice, sweet DIY calc reactor. If you got any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you build your own, again, let me know in the comments below because I'm really curious to hear. And always, guys, if you enjoyed this, hit that like button if you're new. Make sure you subscribe. I'll catch you guys on the next update.